Hello and welcome to the Monday, November 27th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So back after the Thanksgiving week that I took off and, well, uh, was lucky here. No major event uh, during this week. A uh, little bit sort of some of your usual stuff that we need uh, to uh, kind of talk about uh, today. So a little bit catching up here. Also, just want to mention that Thanksgiving is always sort of the anniversary of the shield.org, the data collection engine behind the Internet Storm Center, which was originally released Thanksgiving weekend of 2000. So about 23 years old now. And then we got a couple of new exploits that are being integrated into the Mirai and similar botnets. Mirai, of course, originally just used the weak passwords, but over the years sort of has added a number of web application vulnerabilities. One of them, CVE 2023-1389, is a vulnerability that one of our undergraduate students, uh, Jonah Latmar, uh, looked a little bit uh, closer into and, uh, well, uh, this vulnerability was originally discovered and made public in March. Then uh, later in April, we saw some first hits against our honeypots, but starting September, it really sort of has taken off since it then has been incorporated into some of these botnets, which of course now made the vulnerability much more noisy at this point. The vulnerability is a relatively easy to exploit command injection vulnerability does not require any authentication. You need to expose the uh, admin interface for the router to be vulnerable and apparently the TP Archer AX21 and AX1800 firmware is vulnerable to this. Wouldn't be surprised if other devices are vulnerable as well. And Akamai also wrote a blog post about some new vulnerabilities they're seeing exploited by Mirai variants. They're calling it infected slurs. Now, this appears to be in part some so far unknown uh, default passwords and other vulnerabilities in the network uh, video recorder space. They're not naming any specific vendors here as they are currently not patched. A patch may be released early in in December. These kind of uh, network video recorders should really never be exposed to the internet. There have been way too many vulnerabilities in them in the past and this is something that has also been really difficult to keep up with with patching. And the DA published a quick diary with some tips on analyzing OVA files. OVA files are sort of a standard format to exchange uh, virtual machines. It's based on the Open Virtualization Format, or OVF, and, well, as so often, it's really just a zip file with the virtual disk file, the VMDK file, as it's in particular in the VMware world called, and uh, then a configuration file, that's the OVF file that describes uh, the virtual machine. Analyzing virtual machines uh, files like this can be helpful if, for example, you're just trying to extract the disk file, which is often often what you're sort of interested in or what you try then to convert, move over to a different virtual machine environment. And just to illustrate how difficult it can be to properly respond and evaluate vulnerability reports, I want to point to a vulnerability that was just patched in OpenCart. OpenCart, a shopping cart system, suffered from a code injection vulnerability. However, it sort of looks like you actually needed to be an administrator in order to take advantage of that vulnerability, which of course makes it a somewhat lesser issue. So there was some unfortunate forth and back between the open cart maintainer and the individual reporting this vulnerability. Luckily, it has been resolved, but yes, can be difficult sometimes to quickly analyze whether or not a particular vulnerability is real and also then, of course, how significant the vulnerability is. And if you are using OpenCart, you definitely do want to patch this and also 
we did discussion a little bit about some of the security impacts and uh, what sort of other mitigating controls and such are put in place there so you better understand how these vulnerabilities may affect your system. And then I want to point out the SANS Holiday Hack Challenge. It uh, should uh, become lifelike in a week or two. I added a link to the show notes uh, to more of a description of uh, the Holiday Hack Challenge for this year. And you can already sign up uh, so you will be notified as soon as the challenge is being moved live. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Also, thanks. I noted that a couple of you have left uh, recommendations in like Apple's podcast platform and others. Uh, please keep uh, doing that. That's uh, really helpful. And also, as usual, subscribe. And thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.